This is Bassini Appuccino, a programming language that compiles to JavaScript, or in other words, a JavaScript superset. This is a website written in Appuccino, a spinning donut in Appuccino, and this is the entire Appuccino source code rewritten in Appuccino. And again, all of this compiles to JavaScript. Now you may be wondering, why? What's the point of having a programming language compiled to one of the most annoying programming languages? Well, the answer is simple. We've got Bassin X, Bassin Greedy Code, and we're missing a superset for JavaScript. Yapachino is designed to make you up a lot to make your code work. Inspired by the best language of all time, Java. Public static void main string args, am I right? <laughs> I've never used Java. You can create a variable in Yampuccino by doing constant variable name type, and the constant turns into mutable when you wish to mutate the variable. But before any of that, you have to specify for constant variables whether or not they should be synchronized. Synchronized variables sync their changes. For example, if you have a constant variable x and another constant variable y, and during the program one of them gets the same value as the other, each change made to x will also apply to y. But there are constant variables, what do you mean change value? It literally has constant in the name, you may say. And for that I have to say, just use the unsynchronized keyword. But a constant variable in JavaScript isn't truly constant, it's a constant reference to a value. Shut you can create a mutable variable with mutable variable name type. And just like constant variables, you have to add the keyword before it. Volatile is literally the I don't trust this variable keyword. But if you're really sure that that mutable variable is safe, just do stable mutable variable name type. And just to revise, all of this compiles back to JavaScript. And since it's a superset, you can just avoid doing all of this verbose and extremely useful syntax brought by Apecino. And just create variables with letter const. But of course, that's bad practice. Functions. I absolutely hate the fact that you have to type the entire function word create a function in JavaScript. And in my opinion, the best function keyword is fn. This is a certified Rust moment. So because I hate it so much, I made it even longer. In Yapuccino, you can create a function by doing dependent invariable void subroutine main arg ligature. But of course, it's not a JavaScript superset if it doesn't have fake types. I wanted the type syntax to be the reversed way of TypeScript. Just like how you assign types to function arguments in C++, except you also have to add a color. That sucks though, since it's extremely generic and too intuitive. My friend came up with the idea to do types like this. First the list of arguments, then separated by a colon, their type. And no, I haven't ditched the do it in reverse idea. It will just transfer to the function return type. So again, to do a function in Yapuccino, all you have to do is arrow type independent or dependent, in variable or variable, void or ratify, function or subroutine, main arg1, arg2, arg3, comma, integer, ligature, integer. But maybe you're wondering, what's up with all that noise? Well, it's all justified. A function is independent if it cannot be called, and a function is dependent if it can be called. Invariable if a function cannot be set as the value of a variable, and variable if it can. Void if the function may return undefined or null, and ratify if it doesn't. A function turns into a subroutine if it doesn't have anything to return. And then again, all of this turns back into this. Wonderful, isn't it? Yapuccino is finally getting fake types. Now for classes, they're quite simple. You can create a class by first specifying if it's trans... How do I pronounce this? Hold on. Transient. Transit. And... Transitory. Transitory. Transit classes can only be initialized once. Isn't that basically every JavaScript class ever? To set up the constructor for the function, you can use the extemporize keyword. A quick reminder that almost all function variants in Yapuccino follow the same type structure. So the extemporizer looks something like this. Also, this was renamed to aforementioned for better memorization. The functions inside classes must be suffixed with a question mark. There's no technical reason behind it, I was just lazy to properly parse it. But it looks cool, doesn't it? Bundling all of that together, this is how a class looks like. You can initialize it by epitomizing it. Now, I absolutely hate console.log. Every other language I use day to day calls their printing function print or some other variant like print line. To counter this, in Yapuccino you can print by doing standard system input output format print line. Why that's just too simple? Instead, in Yapuccino you can now access object properties like this. So, for example, if you want to import the .nv module and configure it, you can do it like this. Also, fun fact, the V8 engine, which runs JavaScript, doesn't have console.log. It's implemented by other runtimes. After running a survey in my Discord server, totally join it by the way, link in the description, we have figured out that renaming this to aforementioned was a huge success. To improve Yapuccino further, here's a list of all the keywords that have been changed for better memorization. Strings will be called ligatures in Yapuccino. Why exactly ligature? Well, I was searching for some words that I had noted, and ligature was one of them. So I googled its meaning and read 
a thing used for typing. Wait, typing? But that says time. Yeah, that's the whole story. Strings are now ligatures. You know, the more I think about it, the more I realize. We've evolved as a society beyond ones and zeros. So I introduce to you the mega bull. You can still use true and false, just like a boolean, but there's also neither, both, maybe, true-ish, false-ish, depends, and complicated. All of this complete the novem header, novem meaning 9 in Latin. Your logical operators still work the same, but checking for a boolean via the double equal equal whatever you call it operator now makes actual sense. For example, you can check if the success variable that is returned upon an HTTP request was maybe successful or if it's complicated. And if you're wondering, this is how it looks transpired to JavaScript. Switch cases in JS. Who the hell uses them? Like sure, there's that one edge case where you want to match a lot of stuff without having to type the variable name again and again. But like who thought bringing goofy indentation in JavaScript for a switch statement was a good decision? Like bro, am I writing C with those constant uppercase variables I made for no reason? Am I writing Rust with those constant snake case functions? Or am I writing Python with those useless switch statements? Yes, I know indentation doesn't matter in cases, but then what's the point of making them different syntax from the entire language. Also, why do you have to do this to match more values for a single case? Yapuccino aims to fix all of this mess. I kinda like the match statement in Rust, so I'm just slightly gonna control C, control V, code a little and boom, this is now valid syntax. And most importantly, no more weird indentation and break keywords. Now for loops. JavaScript has the iconic for loop syntax, with the variable declaration, condition and the update expression. I believe it's derived from C and to be honest it looks beautiful for a reason. But a loop syntax that I kinda like more is this one, which I believe exists in Swift, Ruby and Rust. Translating it to Yapuccino, this is how it looks. For the range you can also use variables that hold a number. Keep in mind, everything I've mentioned is optional, this is a superset. If you don't like the Yapuccino for loop, which many of you apparently do, Discord server by the way, link in the description yet again, alright thanks. You can still use the default one, all of that reasoning just for me to copy another Rust feature. Very cool. Now you may wonder why I wrote Yapuccino in JavaScript. Wouldn't it be smarter to write it in Rust or an actual programming language? It would, but now the best part comes, rewriting Yapuccino in Yapuccino. Okay, we should be live. Hello, hello. So, we have something called Yapuccino, which is uh, a programming language. The source code is around uh, 470 lines. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna rewrite the source code in itself. Yeah, it, it, it is nerdy, I'm gonna admit. Something fun that we're gonna do is we are gonna be using greedy code. So instead of import, we're gonna use uh, connotate. This will be extremely laggy because it's very resource intensive. If we run it using yup, ignore the autocomplete, this is a real option, it makes the compiler shut up. If we just run it and then go to this and we go to the top, uh, yeah, it's basically compiled. And since the language does not check types, because it's it's paid by me, of course it doesn't check types, uh, we're gonna just set it to here. Uh, it's gonna be dependent. Okay, that was not supposed to happen. Um, I hate words, I'm gonna just copy this. Uh, okay, now we get to use the custom loop syntax. Uh, we're gonna check for it, and it did not work. Okay, cool. <laughs> Shut up, I'm not Okay, so I have a few talking points that I forgot about now that I uh, read that message. So I explained the goal of the line stream. I, gonna, I gotta acknowledge the stupid PNG avatar. So, I have no way of um, symbolizing when I'm speaking, okay? I don't have a webcam, I don't have a whatever nonsense there is. So I'm just gonna use a PNG. It's only for this live stream, I hope. So if people don't like it, I'm not gonna use it anymore. Put some subway surface gameplay, okay. Um, for I in... Um, Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna 
I'm gonna do some more debugging off camera and we're gonna wrap it up here. I might do more live programming for future projects, so there's smash that subscribe button. After the live I finished rewriting a Pacino in itself, created some examples such as the donut, which I did not make, I borrowed it from GitHub. I also made the basic website for your favorite web dev stack, HCY, HTML, CSS, Cappuccino. Well, that's it I guess. I had this video idea from the quote, developers are drawn to complexity like moths to flame, often with the same outcome. I've also created the subreddit called FaceDevSub if you want to join. I may or may not make a second channel video going over them on the mount if there are good enough posts. A big thanks to all of the patrons and into members for supporting the channel, thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one. The TypeScript source code is around 17 megabytes. Yapuccino, however, is 17 kilobytes, which means you can have around a thousand Yapuccinos for one TypeScript. Is it really worth it?